This is Movie Tone. Lionel Gamlin reporting. Homeward bound, HMS Vanguard called at the lonely island of St Helena in the South Atlantic. The royal family went ashore, transferring from their barge to a native boat in which they were rowed in to the landing place. This was indeed a great event for the island's population, which numbers about 5,000. Some three miles from the port of Jamestown is Longwood, where Napoleon was lodged in exile in 1815 and where he died in 1821. After visiting the historic house, they went on to the governor's house, where there was quite an amusing encounter with a real Methuselah of a tortoise, said to be over 200 years old. It was already about 70 when Bonaparte was there. St Helena, which is volcanic, has an area of 47 square miles. It looks quite attractive, apart from its extreme isolation from the rest of the world. During the passage home, the princesses explored the mysteries of Vanguard's engine room. Both Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret also did a bit of steering. Towards the end of the voyage, Rear Admiral Agnew, commanding Vanguard, presented a wallet to the King and brooches to the Queen and the Princesses, souvenir gifts from the ship's company. And as mementos of the happy days spent aboard the great battleship, these group photographs were taken. The last stage of the South African tour, involving altogether a journey of something like 25,000 miles, was reached when Vanguard and her escort steamed in towards Portsmouth. Contrasting vividly with the departure scenes early in the year, beautiful weather now graced the occasion. Ashore, vast crowds had collected to see the homecoming. From every point where they could get a view, people had been waiting to wave and cheer. It must have been a real thrill for the royal family. True, they had been receiving one great ovation after another throughout the long tour, but this was different. It was a welcome home. More even than that, the people of Britain were very well aware of the far-reaching effects, the outstanding success of the really strenuous visit to South Africa. And the citizens of Portsmouth were the first to be able to make it clear that they realized this. When Vanguard had come alongside, the Duke of Gloucester went aboard. He greeted the King officially and as his brother. Affectionate family salutations followed. During the Sunday night, the royal family stayed on board. Next morning, farewells were exchanged on deck. Then, as the king led the way down the gangway, Vanguard's 2,000 officers and ratings said their goodbye. Ceremonies in Portsmouth included the visit to the Guildhall, where by tradition the keys of the fortress of the city were presented. The 
royal family finished the short journey to the station on foot. There remained the train journey to London and the welcome awaiting them in the capital. At Waterloo, they were received by the Duke of Wellington, Lord Lieutenant of the County of London, the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary. And now began the drive to Buckingham Palace. Londoners were out in their tens of thousands and the drive was a triumph all the way. To judge by the numbers of cheering people, it was just like Victory Day all over again. And in its own way, it was a Victory Day. But the King, the Queen, the heir presumptive and her sister had, through the tour, accomplished a resounding success. All of us at home know that full well. And this is how Londoners expressed their feelings. along the Mall, towards the approaches to the palace. And there, as always, of course, the biggest crowd of all had collected. carriage drove in, the royal standard flew over the palace for the first time since the tour began. The tour was over. The king and his family were back. The nation, represented by the people of London, undoubtedly offered a sincere, affectionate and royal welcome home.